All right, you still have all the same debug information that there you previously had. There it is, landscape, had. right? So I'm debugging live from Visual Studio onto my phone. Beautiful. Yeah. And back, it and works. it goes right back there. Um, it is important to note, though, that if you want to debug on a phone, that you need to register that phone with your developer account yes. so that you can sideload applications uh, and deploy from Visual Studio. Right. Okay? And that... Uh, there is a tool with the, the SDK that allows you to do that. It's the Windows Phone SDK, which you can download for free um, at our Visual Studio website. So what's next on the agenda? So let's talk about hardware real quick. And I totally skipped that slide. Hardware overview. We do, um, our platforms do target a, a large scope of hardware. Okay. Um, in particular, when we're talking about Windows 8. So let's talk about that. Um, so Windows Store, again, th these are the apps that target um, tablets, all-in-ones, desktops, laptops, uh, essentially any device ranging from those tablets to uh, full-blown gaming PCs. Um, so the specs are all over the place. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you've been in game development for a long time, the same concepts apply. That's right. Know, know your platform, know what your game can run on. Run, know your demographic, uh, who you're trying for to target. It. Right. So, you know, don't go, don't go build Crisis and expect it to run on an ARM tablet. Right, that was the ongoing um, meme in 2007. Kind of Can it run Crisis? Right. So this is, these are some typical minimum specs, right? We've got ARMs, x86, x64 platform processors. Yep. Uh, one gig of RAMs, typically the minimum I've seen recently. Okay. Uh, GPUs. Uh, it's important to note some of our ARM-based devices, like the Surface RT, uh, our DirectX feature level 9.1. So there's a lot of missing shader support, uh, modern shader support on the Tessellation, things like that. Um, so you're, you're essentially, you're kind of constrained to shader model 2 at that point. Okay. With that uh, level 9.1. Now, um, again, if, if you plan on targeting stuff like that and you've got very simple graphics in your game, it's not really a problem. Right. Right. So it's just advanced rendering techniques that you're going to run into issues with. Okay. Um, all the way up to direct, the latest DirectX 11.2 and all the goodness there. Uh, minimum res resolution on a Windows 8 machine is 1024 by 768. That's the uh, old school 4x3 look. Right, yeah. And there's not many devices out there that, that range uh, in that level anymore. Okay. Um, Input-wise, you know, mouse, keyboard, uh, the standard PC inputs. Um, touch becoming more prevalent, right? Yeah. With tablets yeah. and all-in-ones, and even touchscreen monitors. And then also gamepad controllers, which is awesome, right? Absolutely, and that's built so into you can itself. Factor, yeah. It's all, it, you kind of just get it out of the box, gamepad controller support yeah. with Unity. And before we, we skip over Touch, uh, I just wanted to point out that previously, Touch was a requirement for Windows 8 applications. Uh, but in the last year, we've actually dropped that requirement. But it's still best practice to at least inform your users um, that uh, they no longer require Touch. So if, right. for example, you, you need gamepad control, uh, it's good to leave a little note right there in the description of your application in the store so that people with, say, a tablet don't download your game um, and not have a gamepad connected and suddenly assume they can play on a flight when they're just touching with their fingers. Right. Windows Phone 8 hardware. Uh, these are the minimum specs. We've got all of our phones um, have Qualcomm processors. Um, you know, the, the, the minimum is going to be the S4 dual core. Very capable processor. Uh, minimum 512 megabytes of RAM mm -hmm. on these phone devices. Um, I do want to note that if you have trouble getting your game running on one of these devices, you can opt out of that. Uh, and uh, we have a session, I believe it's later this week, for, with Jaime that's going to go way more in depth on this stuff. Yes, that's on uh, Thursday morning. As far as uh, all the technical details of exporting and how do you configure your Visual Studio solution to do things like this. Um, which little workarounds for everything. Get a yep. little more uh, oomph and power out of your device. Again, uh, GPU is going to be constrained down to, to DirectX uh, feature level 9.3. Yep. So it's going to be like shader model 2 with a couple extra little features added in. Uh, these are the standard resolutions. We do you know, the 800 by 480 ranging up to 1080p. Mm -hmm. um, and then sensor-wise, if your game makes use of sensors, yes. there, we have the standards, accelerometer, light, proximity. Um, some phones have... Gyromometers, magnumometers, so you can, you know, it's just compasses. It depends on the platform. And if you're going to target any of that, just make sure that you're using uh, robust coding to make sure that your game doesn't crash if that doesn't have that sensor. Yeah. Um, another note, Windows Phone. Um, it is a requirement uh, on that platform to have a back button. Yep. Right. So uh, it used to be a hardware requirement. Now it's just a requirement. 
some of the new phones actually have um, soft buttons for back. Right. Right. The HTC One. Very good point. Right. Uh, some of the new Nokia phones they just announced are going to have soft key buttons. Um, so, you know, typical behavior is the app's going to pop in the back stack. So if I've got a, a app that I'm navigating through and I hit the back button, it's going to go backwards. Yeah. Um, if I have a modal dialog, it's going to dismiss that. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, Unity handles all this for us out of the box. Yeah, it does. It will pick that up. Um, I'll show you some code on the next slide that kind of how to handle that in your Unity script. Okay. Um, if you if you're on your home page and you hit the back button, it's going to exit the game or the app. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have a if you're in gameplay and they hit the back button, it's a good idea to maybe throw up a pause menu, right? That's I've seen a lot of uh, developers handle it that way. Um, you could do some, I guess you could have some fun with it too. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, it depends on what you want to do with your game. Um, the, the back button in Unity is actually the escape key. It's mapped to the escape key. So I can just check, hey, am I hitting escape? And you can kind of handle it the same way. So if I'm on a PC and I hit escape, that's yep. usually that brings up the pause menu. And so you could do the same thing in your, your phone game. Mm -hmm. So here's just some basic code to show um, how to do this. So the, the first sec here is, hey, this is how I'm doing a, a back repress event in my phone page. And you can see that um, I'm going to cancel that event because I want to call Unity and tell it that the back button's been pressed. Okay. Right? And so in your update, or wherever you handle input, yeah. uh, you can get the uh, get key down state for escape. And if it's been pressed, I can handle it there. I can quit, or I can uh, pause my game, whatever I need to do um, that fits my game. Okay, okay. I like it. Um, hardware APIs, right again, uh, these are all built into Unity. Mm -hmm. There's nothing special you have to do to get this functionality. I think it tests these all in the simulator as well, which actually right. Touch, microphone, webcam, um, the sensors and location services. Okay. And, and you can access all of these from uh, scripting like you would do any other platform. Mm -hmm. So it's nice, great, seamless, um, easy to do. Let's talk about some platform specific features. And these are features that can kind of make your game stand out a bit on the platform. Absolutely. Right? Um, some of those include live tiles and notifications. And those, that applies to Windows Store uh, and Windows Phone. Okay. Right, so I can have high scores. Um, I can tell you that your friend is, has played his turn. Yeah, using push notifications, waiting, things right? like that. You can use these push notifications. Excellent use so, of Azure mobile services, might I say. Yeah, nice, nice plug for your uh, module tomorrow. Um, you know, make a good splash image for your game. That's going to be presented every time your game is launched, right? No matter what. Mm -hmm. um, contracts. So setting charms, uh, share charms, these are all those Windows 8 charms. Yep. That kind of pop out on the right-hand side as by you mouse cover your down, mouse. Maybe. I'm in presenter mode, so I don't think it's going to work. But um, I can do things like I can share out to my social networks from my game okay. using the share charm. And that's a platform feature that comes with Windows 8 uh, and is available to Windows Store apps. Snapping, uh, it is important that you know, any application can be snapped on the Windows Store. Right. Windows Store app platform. You can gracefully handle, you know, half screen. So, views. yeah, you have to handle it. Uh, a lot of times if I snap something, it'll get put into like a half screen view mm -hmm. or, or even smaller than that. And there's ways to set a minimum uh, width on that. Uh, but just handle that gracefully. Don't crash. Right. I've seen some pretty innovative stuff where people have changed the game play state or yeah. mode to a, a smaller, maybe vertical mode on the screen. Not a bad idea. Uh, for example, Solitaire, you know, I'm playing horizontally and I put it in snap and it rearranges the cards up yeah. into a, a vertical arrangement. Or even a game that only plays through snap view. I always want to see something like that. Maybe I can have a snap yeah. view game, someone playing a Tetris like clone, and then on my uh, three quarter view, I'm kind of watching YouTube in the background. Cloud store, yeah. Uh, again, Azure mobile services, I can sync gameplay state across the cloud. I say pick it up, maybe save on your Windows 8 device, then switch over to your phone, and you pick up exactly where you left off. Yeah. Uh, Windows Phone, a lot of the same things. Uh, back button, make sure that's handled gracefully. Uh, that's a, that is a, a platform uh, feature that users expect to work. Uh, live tiles, notifications, again. Um, a good splash image for my game. 
uh, launchers and choosers. These are things that are be able to pick photos, uh, mm -hmm. launch websites, um, good monetization models, uh, and then screen recording. I can take screenshots of my game, okay. share it out. Um, you know, some some of the newer services that let you record clips of your game and share. Not a bad out, idea, right? Stuff like that, and, and, it, and that applies to any mobile platform, really. Okay, so it sounds like it'd be a lot of work to to get a lot of these going on our platform. Um, so there's got to be a better way, or, or I mean, has someone come up with some sort of tool or or plugin for us to use? What? Prime Thirty One, right? All right, it's a great. Yeah, we can plug the Prime Thirty One plugins again. Uh, again, free. Download at prime31.com. Good for the next uh, year. Go to the plugins page, and you can uh, pick Windows or Windows Phone and download them. Yep. Uh, here's that. And coming around the home stretch, you only have a couple uh, of things left here. Four hundred dollars plus. Yeah. Okay. And let's talk about plugins real quick, uh, and what that architecture looks like in your assets. So. When you're adding plugins for the Windows and Windows Phone platform yes. in your Unity project, this is what the folder structure needs to be. So assets, plugins, that's a standard in Unity. Right. Right. All of the plugins should be there. Um, if I'm targeting Windows Phone 8, I've got a WP8 folder. Mm -hmm. uh, for universal apps in Windows Phone 8.1, I've got Windows Phone 8.1. Uh, for Windows 8, I've got Metro. Um, or Metro Win 8.0. Yeah. Um, and the, this is all new if you've done anything before. Right. This is stuff they've added in recently. Uh, and then, again, for Windows 8.1, I've got Metro or Metro Win 8.1. If, yeah. if I need to discern between the two versions of Windows 8, I can do that within the Metro folder. And to be clear, it's Unity that requires us to have these, uh, right. exactly. this, this naming scheme because it's specifically looking for a plugins folder and then specifically looking for a plugins slash WP8 folder. If you name it anything else, it's not going to know which platform it's for. Yeah, and most and the plugin vendors are really good about yes. when you install and import into the your Unity project. Yep. They they map out this folder structure um, at the installation. So uh, it, this is here more for informational debugging purposes in case you run into any issues. Yeah. Uh, or you need to manually update your uh, your plugin DLL um, later on. Um, other Third-party plugins, uh, we we have over the the course of the past year run into some that do not support our platform out of the box. Uh, we for a number of reasons. Mono we, support, .NET support. Right. So the editor um, runs Mono. Other platforms compile against Mono .NET. Yeah. Uh, you know, Windows Store, Windows Phone compiles against .NET for Win WinRT yes. and Windows Phone. And uh, Jaime is going to go in and again into that in more depth on Thursday. Yeah. Um, and what that the runtime differences look like. So if you're nerdy, low-level developers. Yeah, if you're nerdy like us, yeah, uh, and you want to delve into that kind of thing and yeah. see the, how the guts of the runtime works, definitely tune into that on Thursday. So uh, I think there's actually a tool to help us really discern what will and will not work on each platform. Yeah, so iOS, Android, Windows. Xamarin's good. Yes. Yeah, Xamarin, scan.xamarin.com. They've got a great tool to upload a DLL and select your target platform, and hey, is this API set compatible with that platform? How mobile is your .NET, right? Will yeah, it work everywhere, yeah, exactly. or will it just work on these specific platforms? Yeah, and that's it's really great for that. Thank you, Xamarin, for publishing that out on the web. I've used it many, many times. Yep, you uh, can look at uh, executables or dy dynamically linked libraries, DLLs. Yep, and so I, I've used it many times. As have um, I. I will say the, the plugin Library is growing and growing and getting better. Yeah. Uh, if you run across one that is not working for you, please again reach out to uh, an evangelist at Microsoft, and we can engage those developers uh, and get them working on our platform. If it's something you need, and you're working with one of us, definitely let us know so that we can address that. Loader devices. Let's talk about that. Okay. I like free hardware. Yeah. So. Uh, I need a little bit of wording here on the first bullet point. Your local evangelist can likely loan you a developer device. There are no guarantees in world. It depends right? on what region you're in, what part of the world you're in, a um, lot of moving parts to that. How many are available at that point? Yeah, how many are available? Yeah. Right, so uh, the best way to find out is to find your local evangelist. We've got this great directory on MSDN that helps you do that. I've got the link here, aka.ms, find my evangelist, um, so you can find one of those. I'm in Dallas, so if anybody from Dallas is watching, uh, please reach out to me 
at Jason G. Fox on Twitter or Jason.Fox at Microsoft.com um, for, for any of this stuff, loaner devices, any advice on Unity, um, publishing your game, anything yeah. like that. We're here to work with you and help.